Good afternoon, everyone. Rejoice Sunday today, Gaudete Sunday. Do you remember that old song, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Remember that? Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. I think you can sing it in a round, can't you, Cheryl? Okay, you can, okay. Well, it's good to be here today. Do we have anyone from out of town today visiting us from out of town? No? Okay. Well, we're all here that we know each other, right? <laughs> Let's go to our special prayer and pray together. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. My parish is composed of people like me. I help make it what it is. It'll be friendly if I am. It'll be holy if I am. Its pews will be filled if I help fill them. It will do great work if I work. It'll be prayerful if I pray. It'll make generous gifts to many causes if I'm a generous giver. It'll bring others into worship if I invite and bring them. It'll be a parish of loyalty and love, of fearlessness and faith, of compassion, charity, and mercy if I who make it what it is am filled with these same things. Therefore, with the help of God, I now dedicate myself to the task of being all things that I want my parish to be. Amen. I have to tell you something funny on this Gautes Day Sunday. I went to pick up Father Pat's drugs the other day at Sixth Street Drugs, and I went in there, and the guy says to me, what's your birthday? I said, this is for Pat Collins. I said, it's, it's 12, 1, 36. And he says, well, happy belated birthday to me. And I said, I look 87 years old? <laughs> So he said, oh, oh, no, he didn't know how to save himself from that one, but, um, but um, oh, well. Then a guy yesterday said to me, well, aren't, aren't you in your 70s, Father, yet? So I, so I thought, maybe this is a week where I'm looking like I'm really old, really old. Okay. <laughs> Let's turn to each other and welcome each other to Mass. <laughs> welcome. There's nothing wrong with being old. I just don't want to be 87 yet. <laughs> oh, John, bless you, bless you, bless you. Bless you. And on this Gaudete Sunday, we sing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 395, but we will sing verses 5 and 6 this weekend. Number 395, verses 5 and 6. into this Rejoice Sunday, let's ask the Lord to help us to be his joyful people, to recognize his presence among us and to see his presence today on this altar and also in the gift of each other and in the world. For those times we fail to recognize him, let's ask the Lord to forgive us for not noticing his grace among us. 
You came to heal the contrite. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. You came to call all of us sinners. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. And you plead for each one of us at the right hand of the Father. Kyrie eleison. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life that is everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity. Enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord. In my God is the joy of my soul. For he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice. Like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants, and a garden makes its growth spring up. So will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything, retain what is good, refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will always accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light, and so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, What are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I'm not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, who are you so we can give an answer to those who sent us? What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. 
Make straight the way of the Lord. As Isaiah the prophet said, some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or a prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you who, who, you whom you do not recognize, one who is coming after me, whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. are probably thinking to yourself, isn't that almost like last week's gospel? And if you are thinking that, I'm pretty impressed because it was quite close to last week's gospel. And that says to me, you're paying close attention. Last week we heard from Mark in his rendition. This week we hear from John. And John the Baptist is again at the center of the gospel. There are quite a few similarities between both Gospels, but I'd not like to focus on those similarities today, but I'd rather like to focus in on one line that appears in John's Gospel that did not appear in Mark's. And that Gospel line is this. It seems like a throwaway, but it's this line. But there's one among you whom you do not recognize. One among you whom you do not recognize. Of course, when we hear that immediately, I know what we're thinking. We think John the Baptist, John the Baptist is heralding the coming of Jesus, his relative, the Lamb of God. And John will soon cleanse Jesus in the baptism of water in the Jordan. And yet, as we get what this passage means, many people won't accept or recognize Jesus for who he really is, God's Son. The Messiah, Messiah, who they all longed for from long ago. But are those the only people John is talking to? But there is one among you whom you do not recognize. Of course, I'm referring to us, you and me, in this time, in this place. Jesus who dwells in us. Maybe we don't recognize him there. But wait, you probably say, that doesn't make sense. You might be thinking, we believe in Jesus. We believe in God in the flesh, the second person of the Trinity. We believe he is miraculously born of Mary. We believe he had some pretty insightful, beautiful things to say, important truths to show us and to teach us. And we believe that he suffered incredibly a cruel and unjust death for us. And yet in that selfless act, most importantly, that he saved the world. He redeemed every person for all time. What do you mean we don't recognize him? We're here today, aren't we? You're right. But that's not the Jesus I'm referring to. I'm not talking about the Jesus of history. I'm talking about the Jesus, the God who still is among us, who still dwells with us, in us, is present in us, still graces us with his presence, still reveals himself to us in many of the holy and beautiful acts that each of us do over and over again for him. This is the Jesus that sometimes people have a hard time seeing. Sometimes they have a hard time looking for him in every person, good and bad. Sometimes they have a hard time seeing Jesus in the joyful moments and the tragic ones, the saints and the sinners. The miracle of the incarnation, as you know, isn't just that our God visited us long ago or came to save us through that miracle of 
being born of Mary in Bethlehem, but it's also about a God who broke into the world in a profound way and continues to keep breaking into this world the same way over and over again in so many moments of every day in each of us. In the beautiful sacraments we celebrate in the joys of our faith. That's what we're preparing for. We're preparing to see and unwrap where Jesus is still present. That's the miracle we hope to keep experiencing, not just on Christmas morning, but every day and every person in every situation we find ourselves in. That we keep finding Jesus in our life. That's what the incarnation makes possible. A God we don't have to gaze up into the heavens to find or search for, but a God who rather is always with us. We need to pay attention to that and expect him around every corner. Look for him in the eyes of all people. Recognize him in the beauty of others in the sacraments we celebrate. Being able to recognize God in our midst, recognize grace is a gift. Yet not one of us is beyond that in our reach. But sometimes we don't see, always see. But God wants us to see how he's present. And we sincerely want us to always notice he's there. This is the gift that keeps giving. Not once only, but all the time, for us to embrace and to notice. We believe it. And we just need to start encountering God more, more and more in our days on this earth. And then if we do that, our days will be filled with grace beyond our telling. Today, as we celebrate this beautiful Sunday, Gaudete Sunday, this rejoiced Sunday, this joyful Sunday, both the passage from Isaiah in the passage from Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, remind us about rejoicing, as if it was a hallmark of our faith. Rejoice. But if we know from experiencing life, it's not always that way easy to always be joyful, is it? To rejoice in this life of ours. After all, we know that life as it is doesn't always work out that way in the way we hoped it would. Sorrow comes our way. Disappointments pile up. Relationships break. Love, loved ones die. We get sick. We suffer greatly. And when those things happen, joy is the last thing sometimes we expect to experience. But the incarnation of Jesus Christ teaches us a profound thing, a profound truth, that our loving God is not absent from those experiences. He's in them, in the midst of all of them, in the mess and the heartache, the tears. He's proved that to me many times in my life, How about you? He's been present in the toughest of situations. And he often shows us that in many people that come to our aid as they pour out their love and mercy and compassion over us and forgiveness. Sometimes life seems so dark but and empty and devoid of life. But God is always there if we open our eyes. Our God is truly a God that wants to show us and embrace us with love and understanding. That's why when we imagine Mary giving birth to Jesus, we usually don't see, even see the dirt or the dampness or the danger, the darkness of that manger long ago. Rather, when we think about Jesus' birth, It transforms all the pain, the suffering, into a beautiful thing. When we look into our crushes, we see the beauty of God among us. Recognize love. 
And so it's with each of us, each time we're able to recognize that God isn't far away, but closer than we ever imagined, we sense the manger is now each of us. And God is asking us to bring him to the world in his love that we share freely. But there's one among you whom you do not recognize. My friends, let's not be people who go through life finding it hard to recognize Jesus in our midst. Rather, let's find him where he truly is on this altar every time we celebrate Mass. In the sacred texts that we hear at Mass, within each of us, at this time of the year with all the cards that come to us in the mail, all the gifts that people give to us with joy, let's recognize him in all the things that we do during this time to bring joy to other people. And all the sacrifices we make of time and talent and treasures. Let's recognize that Jesus is everywhere. Let's recognize that. Let's see that he is there in all of us every day. Amen. Let's stand and proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God and light from light, true God and true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who as the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, our Father, we bring before you now these our needs in our prayers. That the church may be blessed with an ever more effective voice in the world to herald the joy of the gospel to all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all church leaders, through their men of service, may help prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world and local leaders may seek the values of heaven rather than the values of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord who comes to bring liberty and justice may inspire us to secure protection for our unborn brothers and sisters. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That each of us may proclaim the greatness of God through our actions of love and kindness to others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they may rest in the peace of the Messiah. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Alice Swartz, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those we have lost from our parish this year, for Joe Flaska, who passed away yesterday, 
that God will bless all of them eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the personal intentions that you brought to this Mass today that you'd like to mention to our Lord in the silence of your heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, thank you for this Rejoice Sunday. Thank you for the gift of being able to see your presence among us, to recognize you in so many places, especially during this holy Advent season and during Christmas time. Thank you for allowing us the eyes of faith to see and notice and recognize your Son in our midst. Bless us as we try to reflect him through all we meet, all we share life with. Bless us as your holy people, and may this day be a joyful day for us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As you're seated now, our ushers do come forward, accepting your goodness. Thank you, people of God, for how you bless our parish, St. Philip's. Thank you. And we sing hymn number 417, 417, Warm the Time of Winter. This may be new, so I'm going to play through the refrain. My dearest sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May our sacrifice of our worship 
Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was brought and begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplished for us in your saving work. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. And it is by his gift that we already rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exalted in his praise. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as in one voice now, we all acclaim. <laughs> by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jeff, our Bishop, all the clergy, religious, and all the priestly baptized people of God. Remember Alice Schwartz, whom you've called from this world into yourself, and all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith, and have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Philip Neri and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare now to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For For the the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace on I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's love and peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. And for those with us on live stream, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Distribute the blood of Christ. Distribute the body of Christ. Our communion hymn is number 935, Draw Near, number 935.
Let's lift up in prayer today the, the grieving, the suffering of the world, those in war-torn areas of Ukraine and of the Holy Land, wherever there's strife. Let's ask the Lord to bring peace to our world again. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, O Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us from our faults and prepare us for the coming feast. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And just a few reminders for our week ahead. Let's see if I can find them. Here they are. Okay. First off, thank you all for the beautiful festival we had on Sunday. It was just amazing, and everything went so perfect. I can't even imagine how much better it could have been, but it was just absolutely great. So thank you all. Thank you one and all. Uh, please bring back your wrapped gifts this weekend for the Nicaraguan families. Our parish is providing 125 gifts to our refugee families. And so uh, they're going to have a Christmas beyond Christmas this year. So I think it will be a very special one for them, their first one here in the United States. Uh, we hope to see you um, our, at our next Tizé prayer. It's going to happen this Wednesday at 6 p.m. in an Advent adult series on Wednesday as well at 6 p.m. in church. Confessions also will be available during this time because there weren't many of you that sinned. I was shocked. <laughs> there was only about 15 people that had to go to confession. That kind of surprised me in our parish. I thought, wow, they, they must be going someplace else, I thought. Maybe, maybe they're going someplace else. So I'll, I'll have Father Pat here as well, and so we'll be able to help with the confessions at 6 o'clock this Wednesday. Our 2024 contribution envelopes are located by the bulletin board in the back. Also, calendars to benefit St. Mary's School will be for sale after the 10 o'clock Mass today. See Brittany Hamas for more information. Christmas Eve Mass will be Sunday evening at 4 p.m. with the choir starting at 3.15. There will also be Mass at St. Rita's that evening at 6 p.m. And on Christmas Day, here again on Monday at 10 a.m. So you might want to consider how you're going to do all this, because I know you don't want to get a two-for-one-er in there, right? I know. Um, so it might be good to go maybe on Saturday night and then maybe go on Sunday morning, uh, or, or for maybe Saturday night and then go on Sunday, on Monday for, mor for morning mass so you can split it up a little bit. It's up to you, but try to make it work. I will be here for all of them. I have no choice, okay? <laughs> Me too. And um, talking about contrib contribution envelopes and all that stuff, you know, every year at this time, there are several parishioners that shock me by sending in a major donation for the year, a charitable gift at the end of the year, the end of year giving. And so if you want to do that this year, you may do that. We always will take it for the building campaign. Um, but Kim and I were talking, it would probably be good to make sure you always put that building as a building fund contribution, because if you put it for a regular contribution, the bishop's going to ask for more money for CSA. Okay, so just, just to let you know, it might be good to put it into that fund if you would like to do that because we always get taxed on our collections. Did you, did you know that? Did you know that's how the CSA works? Now you know it, okay? <laughs> um, so, and also another thing, you know, I never thank the people that are online. They're, they give gifts to the parish too and they just watch our masses. And so I hope they're watching today, but thank you for your, your contributions to the parish those that watch our Masses online. So a thank you to all of you as we get 
uh, get to ready for another year. Thank you for how you bless our parish. Sometimes Kim and I are shocked by our collections and how much the people are so generous here. So thank you for being so good, so good. Uh, if I don't see Jesus in all of you, then something's wrong with me as your priest. But I do. I recognize his presence in you and all the love that you share so freely. So thank you. Thank you. You are a beautiful people. Father Pat keeps telling me how lucky I am. I said, you don't have to tell me that. I know that. I'm lucky to be your pastor. <laughs> I am. So thank you. I hope, did I get, miss anything, Kim? I got it all in. Okay, no worries. Have a beautiful day, everyone. God bless you. And again, if you need to go to confession, we're going to be here Wednesday while we have the beautiful Cizé prayer, okay? Let's bow our heads praying for God's blessing. May the Lord always bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you. May the Lord always walk beside you. May the Lord always bless you and keep you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And I was thinking about it, that guy that I picked up the drugs with at Six Street Drugs, I think I'm going to give him a, a gift certificate to the eye doctor so he can get his <laughs> eyes for Christmas. What do you think? Would that be a good yeah, idea? Good idea. Wouldn't that be loving? That would be very that loving, would be. wouldn't it? Our Mass has ended. Let's go forth loving and serving our Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. And we sing hymn number 406, Wait for the Lord, number 406.